another opportunity to be in your midst. Amen. Glory to God. We thank the Lord for this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Once again, this is Pastor Milton Harper from the Upper Room Church in North Little Rock. I'm coming to you today from the sanctuaries of the Upper Room Church, and it is a blessing to continue our steadfastness in the Word and continue to strengthen, uplift, and encourage during this time of transition. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. My God, as I always say, I say, uh, 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 the word of the Lord said that the Lord will anoint us with the tongue of the wise to speak a word in season to him that is weary. We thank you that God has appointed and anointed us for this time to speak a word to encourage and to uplift not only the people of this nation, but the church in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord. We pray that you will be blessed by the word that will come forth today. We're going to talk today from the top that the Lord had laid on my heart, and we're going to see where God will take us and, and see the encouragement that God will send our way. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Let us pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you for this opportunity in which you allowed us to come and just offer words of strength, words of restoration, words of steadfastness, Lord God, words that will help us maintain our walk and this journey in Jesus' name. And the people of the Most High God say, Amen. Today we're going to be talking about faith, the faith that believes even when it seemed easier to stop believing. We're going to talk about transitional faith. What is transitional faith? What is transitional faith? It's easy to believe in the faith that Abraham displayed, David, and many of the biblical patriarchs. But what about you? What about us during this time of pandemic and during this time of unrest, social unrest and everything that's going on. We need to make sure that we can maintain, not only maintain, but progress, even in the midst of whatever may be going on in our lives, the things that we're facing and the things that we're seeing on a daily basis or hearing in the change in time, the transitional time. Will you still be able to maintain a faith walk with God? Amen? Amen. Let me give you a definition of transition of faith. Transition of faith is when your foundation, when your foundation, your foundation of belief is being challenged, being tested, being questioned. The thing that you believe on, the thing that you believe in for years, you're at a point where Things are being challenged. When I think about transitional faith, I think about transitional faith. I think about Joseph. I thought about uh, uh, the vision that God gave him uh, of being over his brothers and being over his father and mother. I, I, I think about that and I think about the scripture that said that the word that was spoken over Joseph came to try him. That means the promise wasn't fulfilled until the word that was spoken over him was tried. So the promise is intact. Just lift your hand and say, my promise is intact. Your promise is intact. And, but the thing about it is, the word that was spoken over us, the word that we are held on to for so long, that's what's being challenged. Will you keep the faith in the midst of what's going on? My God, just lift your hand and say, I got what it takes. You got what it takes. 
God has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness according to our knowledge of him. But it doesn't mean that the thing that God gave us will not be challenged. Amen? But the thing about it is, do you have the faith to believe? To continue to believe in the promises, to continue to believe in the word of God, even though it seems like the challenges are being intensified. The things that are coming against you seem to come at a more steadily and consistent pace. Amen? We're, we're facing foes that we didn't think we would face. We're facing challenges. Who would have thought that the church would have went through, would be going through the thing that they're going through now? I know back in 1918 with the Spanish flu, church door was closed for a while and things were shut for a while. But in our lifetime, who would have thought that we would be facing what we're facing? But my God, but I'm a firm believer that God is able to keep that which we have committed unto him against that day. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. And, and, and think about this. When, when things, and not for everybody, when things are at an unrest, when things consistently bombard you, come at you on a consistent base, it seems easy for some to give up on God. But the chapter, we're going to look at a, the scripture today and see where even though there were challenges met and promises that God gave, Abraham never gave up on the promises of God. And even though, think about this, God, uh, the Bible says, that uh, uh, in verse 20, uh, Roman chapter 4, that Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. But think about this. Even though, as you look in Genesis chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, you see where Sarah came up with a plan to help God out. And even though Abraham went along with it, that wasn't the plan, the promise that God meant. But even through all of that, look at verse, uh, look again to Romans verse 4 and 20. He staggered not at the promises of God. Now think about this. Lord, have mercy. Mercy, even though they invoke an alternative, an alternative plan, God did not hold it against them fully in the manner of the promise coming to pass from God. Even though they wanted to interject their plan, their motive, God's plan still held out. God's promise still was fulfilled. Even though sometimes we, we interject our plan, the, our ideals, and God's plan, God's plan will still be fulfilled if we stay the course. Amen? Amen. Let's look at uh, Romans chapter 4. There's some things I want us to look at. Let's go to Romans chapter 4. Let's start at the 18th verse. And we're talking about Abraham here. And it says, who against hope believed in hope. Against hope. Believed in hope. So at this time, time, Abraham was venturing out in an area that he had not compassed before. This was new to him. My God. And, and, and he didn't have any written instruction 
on how to do this, on how to follow through this, or, or someone came before him to do it. My God. So he didn't have a picture. He didn't have a hall of fame of faith to look at like we do today. Amen. So the Bible say, who against hope, believes in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, my God. Are you seeing this? So shall be, so shall the seed be. So my God, he's going on nothing but the word that was spoken to him by God. Lord, have mercy. My God. And, and as you look at the time and the thing that's happening now, my God, brothers and sisters, that's all we can rely on now is the word. My God, what that song? <laughs> In the words of the song, everything going down but the word of God. Baby, we're living in those days. My God, but thank God for his word. And we know that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will stand forever. My God, we thank the Lord for his word. Do you have transitional faith? Do you have the faith that believes even when it seems easier not to believe? Lord, have mercy. Lord, I'm going to believe you when believing ain't popular. Amen? Amen. Let's look at the scripture. Let's, let, let's go back to the scripture, verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. My God, he, he didn't consider the, the age of his body. My, my God, he didn't consider, he didn't even consider his body as being the limitation to the promise. My God, wonder how many times when God speaks things to us, the first thing we begin to call into play, our limitation, the thing that we may not be able to do, the thing that our body cannot comfortably do. Amen. My God, if God said it, he has the ability and the power, hey God, to bring it to pass. Amen. My God, let's take a Selah moment. My God, thank God that he's able to perform what he said he could do. Amen? The faith that believes, even when it's easier to stop believing. My God. My God, there's a lot of things out there that's going on that can point to, that, that will point you to, my God, you ought to just throw in the towel now. Let's just stop now. With everything going on, when things like things were getting better, when it seemed like the number was going down, then they began to spike again. But how many know God is still in control? You may be worried, but God ain't worried. My God, amen? Amen. Against hope, he believed in hope. Okay, let's look again. Uh, let's finish out verse 19. When he was, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet did he consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. My God. Not only was he old, but his wife was old. She hadn't, up to that time, she hadn't even born a child. So my God. So there was a lot of things that pointed against. There was a lot, a lot of obstacles that challenged this promise from coming to pass. But how many know, my God, no matter how many things are mounted against you, my God, God still has the ability to bring it to pass. My God, just give God a wave offering, my God. My God, in the name of Jesus, glory to God. We thank you, Lord, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Your name is to be praised. My God, hallelujah, to the king of glory. My God, who is the king of glory? My God, Jesus, our Lord, amen. We thank you. My God, let's look at verse 20. The Bible says he staggered 
he staggered. He wavered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. His faith was strengthened, giving glory to God. He gave glory to God for the fact that he's still in a place that he can believe God. My God, after all the things I've been through, I still have faith, my God. After everything you've been through, you've encountered during these years of walking with God, even the months of pandemic, you still have the ability to believe. You still have the ability to trust God. You still have faith. Because we know the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Lord, have mercy. My God, Lord, have mercy. Get, get in a position where you can hear and receive the word of God and that your faith will continue to grow, my God, in the name of Jesus. One of the things that I know about faith is that faith will help us to conquer difficult times, my God. Ah. We're going to have a difficult time. My God, we're going to have moments of trepidation. We're going to have moments where it seems easier to give up than continue on. That's when faith step in. My God, my God, Lord, have mercy. Faith, faith, my God. And, and think about this. It's easy to preach Abraham faith. It's easy to preach David faith or Paul faith, or I like to call it paper faith. It's easy to preach faith from the Bible. But what about when you are faced with this consequence, with the challenges? Where about, what about your faith? My God, hey, glory to God. Abraham faith is good. Abraham faith is an example for those that come in and along the way. But we still have to stand on the word that we believe, the word that we're getting. Amen? Amen. And, and like I said earlier, even though in Genesis chapter 16, you can read that in Genesis 16, verse 1 through 4, that when Abraham or Sarah came to Abraham with the idea of sleeping with Hagar that the promise may come through an heir through Hagar. But even with that, that wasn't the fulfillment of the promise that God gave. It was to be Abraham and Sarah. So even with the interjection of Hagar, my God, the Bible did not, uh, uh, as in Romans 4 and 20, the Bible said he staggered not. So God, there are certain things, certain mishap, we have to deal with it. We have to deal with it in our life. We have to deal with the mistake. Because we know with the mistake of uh, with uh, Hagar, you got Ishmael, and they are still dealing with the effects of the mistake. My God, even though your mistakes may turn into a message, you still have to deal with it. Amen? But the thing that I am thrilled over, God don't hold it against us. Amen? So the Bible, he staggered not at the promise. So even though he realized there was a mistake later on in Genesis, you can see when his mistake starts to laugh at his promise. Sometimes our mistakes will begin to mock our promise. And if we're not careful, it will cause us to stumble. But my God, I thank God for the word that say that he staggered not. So that means 
even though, yeah, Abraham, you all made a mistake. The plan that Sarah had wasn't my plan. But yet and still, I'm going to keep the promise intact. Amen? My God. I'm talking about faith during difficult times and transitional faith. My God. When your faith is challenged. Sometimes in, in Christendom, we think our faith is being challenged by difficulties, by attacks of the enemy, which that can be the case sometimes. Sometimes our faith is challenged when we are presented alternative ways of getting God's plan done outside of what God has planned. Sometimes a uh, 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 attack of your faith is when you are presented alternative, alternative motive, alternative ways of getting things done to go around God's plan, to, to get the fast track. My God. But what God wants us to do, once he gives us the plan, stick with it. No matter how difficult it gets, God will give us the promise. And not only that, we get something out of sticking with the plan. We get strengthened. Amen? Amen. Thank the Lord. The Bible says, stagger not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. My God. And look at verse 21. And look at verse 21. And being fully persuaded. My God. You can't be halfway in this thing. You got to be fully persuaded. You can't be half-hearted commitment. A half-hearted commitment will get you nothing in this walk with God. The Bible says, and being fully persuaded, what he had promised, he was able also to perform it. My God, Lord, have mercy. Not only was Abraham fully persuaded that what God told him was good and intact, he was persuaded to the fact that not only what he told me, he was persuaded that, a, that God could fulfill the promise. Amen. Who would serve a God that could make promise on top of promise on top of promise, but wasn't able to fulfill anything? My God. And the Bible says God ain't like man. Once God make a promise, he can fulfill it. How many times in our life, over our lifetime, that people have promised us some to promise to be there for us or be there with us, to help us or do certain things for us, but it didn't pan out. But when I think about God and his ability to perform what he said. God's resume remains intact. My God. What he said he would do, he would do it. Amen? His resume, his resume proves it out. Glory to God. My God. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and like I said earlier, Abraham didn't have a lot of natural sign that he could look at and say, okay, okay, I can see this happening. Abraham was up in age. He was up in age. I think he was 84 years old when Sarah came to him concerning the the uh, getting with Hagar. 
and fulfilling this promise. So he was 84 years old when Sarah came up with the scheme with Hagar in Genesis 16, one through four. But even though they did this, it was like 13 years later before the promised Isaac came on the scene. Ah, oh, glory to God. My God. My God. So, even though the challenge was to keep the faith, and the Bible said that he believed God, it did not come right away. His faith still had to endure the test of time. And with time, I look at time, that time corrodes even metal. So you know what it will, it will do in this spiritual walk. If you're not careful, time will cause your faith to decay if we don't fortify that faith with word. Amen. We're just being in touch with God on a daily basis. Amen. All Abraham had was the word of God to rest on. That was enough, wasn't it? Amen. So he had to depend on the word of God depend on what God had told him. And he believed it. He believed it. He believed it. Glory to God. And like I say, even though there were another plan interjected along the way, he continued to believe in God. And like I said, Abraham didn't have a lot of signs. To point him that this is gonna happen, this is the way it's gonna happen, this is the way it's gonna happen. Mm -mm. He had the word, he had the word, he either had to believe the word. And that's where we are today. Either we're gonna believe God or not. It's time to come whether we're gonna believe God and continue to walk this thing out, or we just gonna quit. We're in transition. The church is in transition. We are in transition, my God. We're in the midst of transition. Glory to God. And, and think about this. In transition, in transition, sometimes you lose people in transition. I know this is a season where we may lose some things. I remember earlier in the year, the beginning of the year, uh, in our first service of the year, there was some things that was spoken concerning the, uh, this year and it has panned out and some of the things that was spoken was this was going to be a year of loss but it was also going to be a year of gain and I can see the gain we going they're going to be a year of wins but they're also going to be a year of losses but in the midst of it all God's going to be glorified in our midst amen Amen. Glory to God. Sometimes we believe the promises for others, but it's hard for us to believe the promises that God spoke over our lives. My God. When I look at this situation, I think about how that it wasn't that Sarah did not believe the promise. She believed the promise. If she didn't believe the promise, she never would have tried to interject Hagar in the midst of that. So she believed the promise for Abraham. But because of the barrenness of her womb, it was hard for her to believe it for herself. How many of us fall in that category? Because of the things that are going on with us, 
the thing that I have encountered, man, God, I feel like preaching now. The thing that I know of that's in my life, the shortcomings, the limitations that we feel that we may be facing. Do we believe that God can really work this thing out in our life? Do I have the faith for the transitional things in my life? Do I have the faith to believe even when it seems easier to just throw in the towel? Do I have that faith for me? My God. So Abraham, so Sarah believed it. Let me show you how she believed it. She believed it to the fact that, okay, she believed that he was going to be the father of many. She believed that. Why do you think she would interject Hagar to bring in a, 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 a lineage or provide an heir if she didn't believe that it was going to happen for Abraham. But over time, she probably doubted, as many of us do, we have times of doubt. Thomas even doubted until he was able to touch the whole, the nail scar hand of Jesus Christ. And that's what he said. I won't believe until I'm able. I'm paraphrasing. But that's what Thomas said. He was even given the name Doubting Thomas. But my God, he just was at a place where he needed some kind of reassurance. And what did he say? I will not believe until I'm able. But then what? Jesus gave an opportunity to touch and to speak. Feel the nail scarred hand, the holes in his hand. My God. But what did Jesus say? Thomas, you believe because you have seen. But Jesus said, more blessed, oh God. More blessed are he are they that believe, but yet have not seen. Oh, God. Hey, glory to God. I hadn't seen the nail scarred hand. I hadn't touched them physically, but I believe your word. Ah, oh, glory to God. Because your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Glory to God. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word will stand forever. My God. The Bible says in Isaiah, my God, that my word will not return unto me void, but it will accomplish whereunto I sent it. My God. Lord, have mercy. And let me tell you something today. Don't fool yourself. Just because I may not believe the word. There's somebody standing on the word. You may not believe the word. There's somebody standing on the word today. Lord, have mercy. Will you be the one to stand on the word? Will you be the one that will stand by faith? The Bible said that Jesus said, when he returned, will he find faith on the earth? Will he still find you holding on? Will he still find you trusting in him? Will he still find you winning the loss for the Lord? My God, thank you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. The Bible says some men trust in horses. Some men trust in chariots. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. My God, we thank the Lord. Our mercy, God, you are great and you are greatly to be praised. Like I said, with everything that's going on around us, it seems so easy to throw in the towel. It seemed the easiest way out. Let me just get off 
Forget about all this. My God. But just because of the word that God have instilled in me over years, I'm going to stand. I'm reminded of what Joshua said in Joshua 24 and 14. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. My God, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And may the Lord be gracious unto you. My God, I pray for the leadership now of not only this church, this house, but of the church world, my God. I pray that you would strengthen the pastors, Lord God, the evangelists, the teachers, the apostles, the prophets. Strengthen the fivefold ministry. Strengthen the area of the service gifts. Strengthen the administrative gifts. Strengthen the gifts, the uh, uh, discerning a spirit, the prophetic ministries, Lord God. Lord, we pray right now that you will strengthen the, this nation. You will give leadership insight, Lord, that we will begin to stand on the word. In the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you would bring stability in this house, in the church world, Lord God. You would bring stability that the church would be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For we know our labor is not in vain. Be blessed. Until next time, like I said, this is Pastor Milton Hopper of the Upper Room Church in the great state of Arkansas in the city of North Little Rock. Be blessed and tune in next time as we continue to encourage the people of God. Amen.